The Weimar Republic, also known as interwar Germany, was essentially a sexual free-for-all in terms of sexual freedom and divine debt cadence between 1919 and 1933. Nothing was more overtly obvious than the eruption in Berlin in the 1920s. So what was happening? While sexual liberation and daring, progressive art movements like Expressionist, Cinema, DDA, and Bauhaus thrived in post-war Germany, you have undoubtedly seen it immortalized in movies like Cabaret. However, these true stories of women to can't make Lee's dance moves appear downright timid. Welcome back to another exciting video. Today's video is about horrific things that were normal about intimacy in Weimar Germany. Before we start the video, please like, subscribe, and press the bell icon. However, the Weimar Republic was experiencing a gender-bending orgy of contemporary life and intimacy, and Germany was pervasive even though everything was fine. Check out these first-hand reports of what happened in the Weimar Republic. You'll never again view Germans in the same light. This is history simplified. Please join. A whirlwind of alcohol, drugs, sex, fashion, and performance art. The cabaret was a free-for-all androgynous pen sex that embraced sensuality and freedom. Cabarets were the heart of women, Berlin's cultural nightlife. Bertel Brecht, a pioneering playwright, once performed a ballad of the deceased soldier on the stage of a Berlin cabaret, a darkly satirical play in which the German army excavates soldiers' corpses and sends them back to the front. Berlin had hundreds of clubs that appealed to straight people in addition to lounges, gay males, lesbian, male and female crossdressers, and the sporadic pansexual non-binary bonanza. According to the Smart Set magazine, beauty evenings are an odd cross between an opera night and a stroll to a newy bar. Many other cabarets were nothing more than nightclubs or what was known as beauty nights, erotic pageants where CD buyers reclined wearing opera glasses. Marna Dietrich established a legendary backstage image despite being just 15 feet away. Given that author Diana McLean cited Marna Dietrich as possibly the busiest and most passionate bisexual in theatrical Berlin, it makes sense that she would receive two spots on this list. Naturally, many Americans are familiar with the German performer from timeless movies like Shanghai Express Touch of Evil. The devil is a blonde Venus and a woman. However, before moving to Hollywood, Dietrich was a contentious proponent of atomic sex on the German stage and film. Dietrich's behind-the-scenes antics in Berlin's outrageous Wemma theater scene are fascinating. She was known for having a ravenous sexual appetite that would manifest oddly. Famous German actor Klaus Kinski described one such backstage fling in his book. Backstage in a Berlin theater, Marlene destroyed Edith's fantasy and brought Edith to climax using only her lips. Depraved priestess Anita Berber consumed lethal rose blossoms. When a volume is titled Priestess of Depravity, The Seven Addictions and Five Professions of Anita Berber We're Berlin, it's about as passionate as it gets. Professional dancer Anita Berber was a high-spending hedonist who abused narcotics. She enjoyed opium, morphine, and coke, but her preferred substance was exceedingly dangerous. She allegedly consumed rose blossoms that had been steeped in a chloroform mixture. Bihe. Bihe was better known for her sexual exploits than her penchant for ingesting lethal drugs to have fun. She was renowned for challenging gender and sexual norms, supposedly in androgynous cabaret performances. These lie by sexuality was openly exhibited with total disregard for the difference between public and private domains, just like her drug use. As the night's little flirtations turned into suggestive whispers and inebriated grope, Anita got up and danced an impassioned waltz with Mia. She was a stunning strawberry blonde who dated Ellen, an infamous lesbian. Anita gently tapped the dancer's melons as the crowd surrounded the intoxicated performers until the giddy blonde almost passed out. The air crackled with tension and erotic seduction in an orgasmic surrender. Anita was told to sit down as Ellen went to help her wobbly partner. Berber's contemporary, who labeled her the most remarkable spirit I've ever encountered, is the best person to describe her. In that strange underworld of human sexuality, even geese were not secure. Almost any kinky desire could be satisfied in Berlin, and having a romantic companion wasn't always necessary. A journalist from Europe, Lua Barini, describes one of the most bizarre sex acts that took place in the Weimar Republic in his memoir. The act featured a goose. I saw sex dealers gift anything to anyone. Animals, solid young males, little ladies, little boys, and little girls. It was said that slicing a male goose's neck at the exact right ecstatic moment would provide you with the most delectable fry of all because you could simultaneously indulge in sodomy, bestiality, homosexuality, necrophilia, and sadism. Since the goose can be consumed subsequently, gastronomy is also involved. In LGBT cultures, sexuality was expressed through fashion. If you've ever watched a German expressionist movie, you know how important where a dress was. It was gothic, showy, deco, sexually charged, macabre, lavish, stern, and audacious. As Katie Sutton writes in The Masculine, wearing non-gender traditional clothing was seen by many in the Weimar Republic as making a social statement within the expanding female homosexual community in Germany. 
male attire acquired meanings that defied prevailing codes and fashions. The author of Homosexual Berlin, Robert Beeky, spoke extensively about the openness and sexually liberated homosexual culture of interwar Berlin. She acknowledged being a homosexual in an interview with NPR about singer Claire Waldorf Beeky. She shared a home with her companion. She was pretty honest. Although not all her friends were gay or lesbian, she socialized with many other entertainers because she owned a gay, lesbian salon. But because her sexuality was never concealed, and I think most people were aware that she was in a relationship with a woman and genuinely loved women, she was very much a woman. The Weimar Republic was characterized by gender flexibility. It was widespread to change one's gender. Both inside and outside of Lucia's communities, cross-dressing and transvestism were frequent activities. They frequently went hand in hand with investigating non-binary gender and sexuality in a safe environment. Then Austrian author Stefan Spike criticized how this sexual freedom was depicted through messed up balls. Berlin consequently became known as Babel, the center of the globe. Germans applied their enthusiasm and devotion to system-made men with unnaturally trim waistlines. Pro Bernard maintains deviance along the Kefi. Organizations like the Berlin Transvestite were unknown even in ancient Rome. Under the watchful eye of the police, hundreds of men dressed as women, and women dressed as males danced. Young ladies boasted about their perversion amid the general collapse of moral standards, which gripped precisely those middle-class groups that had previously been unshakable in their order. Being accused of innocence at the age of 16 would have been shameful. According to Lori Maho, prostitution was legalized, pervasive, and political in every school in Berlin. A campaign to decriminalize prostitution in interwar Germany resulted in new legislation in 1927, according to Syracuse University's Generation, Sexual Freedom and the Politics of the Weimar Republic. Depending on your income, you could pick up a partner off the street or have prostitutes delivered to you in a limo with champagne. In fact, according to Russ, comprehending the significant changes in gender roles that took place during the Weimar Republic requires a study of prostitution. Prostitution can be seen as exposing cracks in those structures rather than just being interpreted as a sign of the entrenchment of patriarchal norms. But this wasn't always empowering. As Salon Stephen Lemons noted, inflation has made paper money useless. To eat and maintain a roof over their heads, many women turned to the streets searching for work. There were many male prostitutes in Berlin who were of all sexual orientation, as shown by the fact that some people even went there, mother-daughter pairs sexuality, and the Weimar Republic German homosexual emancipation. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more exciting content.